everyone. Happy Cloak and Dagger Christmas to you. I wanted to do a video today on why I love mysteries. I did a video like this in my very first year on booktube. Like I hadn't even been on here a full year. So I thought, why don't I do an updated, an updated video and especially for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. And um, I'll be interested. I didn't go back actually and watch my old video. So maybe at some point I could do like a reaction video to my old video. So I have 10 reasons for you why I love mysteries. And the very first one is that they are easy to dip in and out of. I love the fact that they are pick upable and often put downable, unless you're at the very end, you don't want to put them down. But they are great books for busy people with busy lives to just pick it up, you dive right in, you get pulled right in. Unlike, you know, some classics, you have to work for maybe a hundred pages to really feel like you're sucked in. And mysteries often, you know, the first paragraph, you'll be like, whoa, what's going to happen next? And often there's a dead body by chapter three. And they just are really great when you don't know what else to read, when I don't know what else to read. I know I love to dive into a mystery. The second reason that I love mysteries is that I feel you get a taste of different genres when you are reading them. So you don't have to just read a straight up whodunit. There are different categories of mysteries like I talked about in a previous video and one being historical mysteries. So if I was feeling like I'd like to travel kind of to yesteryear and maybe to a different country, I can do that with historical mysteries and kind of scratch that itch. But if there's not really any historical fiction that is calling to me, I can read historical mysteries. Also, um, Westerns, the Longmire series has just been such a godsend because I've wanted to read Westerns, but whenever I try them, I'm just not that I just don't get grabbed the way I have when I read the Longmire series where I feel like I'm getting to read a Western, but it has a mystery plot to it. And I love that so much. Uh, then the, the also thrillers kind of, I feel like Jane Harper's books tread the line between thriller and mystery in a way that I love where it's kind of this um, threshold that I have where I've, I'm kind of burnt out with thrillers, but Jane Harper's books kind of give me that thrill, but they're still kind of your typical mystery in all the best ways possible. And uh, romance, Susanna Kearsley's books, Mary Stewart's books, Phyllis Whitney, those all have mysteries in them, but you've got some wonderful, beautiful, beautiful romance and some also like the suspense, uh, suspense novels, the kind of ambiance and atmosphere that these ladies just have such skill in writing. I just love that so much. And also literary fiction. There are so many literary mysteries out there and I think people don't realize it. And um, Donna Leone's Brunetti Mysteries, uh, Ruth Rendell's Inspector Wexford Mysteries, and then she also wrote as Barbara Vine. I've only read a couple of her Barbara Vine books. Uh, Elizabeth George's Inspector Lindley Mysteries, so incredibly literary, and Louise Penny's Armand Gamache books. So much reference to arts and culture and just beautiful ways of phrasing things, and I just love that. So that's my second reason. My third reason is that I love people working for the greater good. Something wrong has happened. Someone has been harmed. Someone has had their life taken prematurely. And there are people in this book that you're reading fighting for justice, fighting for um, the wrong to be righted as much as it can if someone's life has been taken. You can never fix it completely, but I love that people working together for the greater good. The fourth is domestic details put in there. They just feel so warm and inviting. And I love feeling um, the sense that I am getting to be in the room with these characters. I'm getting to see what their surroundings are like. I'm getting to feel like I am in the home that they are in. And as a homebody myself, I just find those domestic details, the tea that they're drinking, the curtains in the room, um, the music that they're listening to, all of that to make it just feel so inviting and like a warm hug, as cheesy as that phrase is, that's what it feels like. The fifth reason I think is there is a lovely balance between plot and characterization, at least typically in the kinds of mysteries that I like. I do think maybe in more of your hard boiled, you don't have as much of that. But I think in the historical mysteries, and the literary mysteries that I like to read, I think you really get this beautiful, beautiful balance where you have lovely, um, you know, uh, psych psychology of the characters, getting maybe some of their inner dialogue, and you feel you're getting 
to know this character in, in depth in, in great ways. And then also what is going to happen to them? You know, here's this twist, here's this twist and getting to follow their journey through that. It's just, oh, it's absolutely perfect. And then the sixth reason I have are the longevity of the series. So sometimes there is a standalone mystery, which is great too, when you just want something shorter and not as big to commit to. Um, or sometimes it's a shorter series, but what I really appreciate, um, and I also see this in Korean dramas, is since you spend so much time with these characters, you really do feel that you get to know them so much better than you would with just a standalone novel. Um, so I think sometimes the complaint uh, you hear about Maisie Dobbs that she is too perfect, you know, she doesn't have flaws, but I think if you keep reading, you really get to see um, exactly, you know, what some of these flaws are that you might not see from reading just a couple books. Or with the Inspector Lindley Mysteries by Elizabeth George, I like getting some background on Barbara Havers and why she does kind of seem to really have this chip on her shoulder. What has happened to her in her personal life, in her past that has made her act this way? And also Armand Gamache from uh, Louise Penny's series. You get to see, you know, why why is he making these decisions that really don't seem like they make sense? And then once you delve into his past, or once you get to see him as a fuller character and you see his motivations, you understand, oh, and it makes it all the more rewarding and complicated and layered. And Inspector Brunetti and Donna Leone series, you see that he has had years of fighting Italian bureaucracy to try to solve murders of people. And the seventh reason that I love them is that so many mysteries work well as audiobooks. I find because often it's just kind of plot based, something about it, it's just this sweet spot where it works really well. I find it very easy to follow them as audiobooks. And because they are pretty visually conducive. I just find they work really well. Um, I'm just sound like I'm repeating myself, but I just really enjoy them as audiobooks. Often they've got, you know, I, I don't know that I've had a mystery that I haven't loved the narrator. Somehow just the people that are in charge of picking mystery audiobook narrators pick narrators that I happen to love. So it's definitely a treat. Um, and then they often have humor. My eighth reason, they often have humor. And I think that Humor can be kind of the relief that you need when there are these really hard things happening. And a great example is the Agatha Raisin series when there can be these really chilling events. And Donna Leone's Inspector Brunetti series, often he has humorous conversations with his children or with his wife, Paola, and I really appreciate it. Charles Heathcote's book, An Heir to Murder, I just adored, adored the biting humor in that. So funny, kind of like, I can't believe so-and-so said that, but it was hilarious. Um, yeah, it's just a great relief as you're reading about kind of some harder themes. And then the ninth reason, and this is not exactly for books, but they make great TV adaptations. Often because mysteries are on the shorter side, some of the longer mysteries like Elizabeth George's, I don't necessarily feel the adaptations did them justice, but I think Agatha Christie's are a perfect example. The Brother Cadfell mysteries um, based on El Ellis Peters books were turned into a great series. There have been so many Sherlock Holmes adaptations. And one series that is my favorite detective series, but I haven't watched yet, um, there are some Inspector Wexford adaptations, Ruth Rendell's Detective. I would love to see Maisie Dobbs adapted, and um, maybe in the future they will be, hopefully. And lastly, the 10th reason, I can enjoy new releases. So I'm not always caught up with mystery series and, and you know, in order to be ready for the new releases. But when I am, I just appreciate there's a lot of contemporary fiction that I can't really get into newer fiction. I try several literary fiction every year and end up DNFing them. They're really popular. And I, you know, I think oh, okay, this is going to be the new literary fiction that I love. And I just continually DNF. But with newer mysteries, I usually luck out. I do have mysteries that I DNF here and there, but I do feel like I have a lot more luck with a new mystery as opposed to a new literary fiction or contemporary fiction, uh, historical fiction. And I love that, that I can kind of feel safer trying out those. And also they are easier to get into. So maybe that's part of it. I'm not sure, but it's just this lovely magical formula. So the year 2019 was uh, depressing reading wise because I had my big, big mystery slump. 
it was fixed by the end of the year. So this year has been nice to when I don't know what else I want to read to pick up a mystery and especially just to go all out in the month of December in honor of Cloak and Dagger Christmas. So let me know if there's a reason that you love mysteries that I don't have on my list because I love to hear why other mystery lovers love reading mysteries. I hope you're having a wonderful Cloak and Dagger Christmas and I will be back for another video soon. Bye.